What's up everybody, welcome to this episode of Car Ad. Today, we're talking about the future, or at least what we think is the future of JDM. But to celebrate his birthday, we are going to Brandywine, Maryland to Crab Boss. Crab Boss? He's a little bit of a local legend amongst the seafood fanboys. So that's where we're going. But before we get there, sir, you could Instagram reach. Instagram photo? Oh, yes. Crab Boss? Before we keep on going, you need to see the food, man. It's ridiculous. There you go. Back to pull up. Yeah, um, we're going to tag you, Crab Boss. <laughs> we're going to definitely tag you. But before we keep on going to Maryland, you can reach to the back seat. Underneath the jacket, the hot topic bag. That is a birthday present for you. Yo, dude, stop. So, Why, dude? Up. Why do you do this? Because I love to get you know this, bro. <laughs> bro. Yes. This is freaking dope, man. Freaking huge, is what dude. It is. Where, I didn't even see this last time we were there. <laughs> they only had one. Oh, that's my receipt. Multi roads. I love dude, it. this is sick, man. I got so backstory. Uh, I had I don't see the Charizard. The Charizard. Dude, the Charizard. this is so big. I don't even know what to do with it. So I have Pikachu's for my Evo, but he doesn't have any Pokemon to stick in his back window, which is why for your birthday. Dude, it is huge, man. I got him a Charizard. Dude, thanks so much, bro. <laughs> That's amazing. I didn't even know that his wings are like huge. They are they're stiff. like actual like, and they're big. I kind of like, I almost don't want to put him in my window. Because I don't want him to like fade. fade. I don't think he will because Squirtle's still the same color. He's like a little kitty. He's like a kitty. <laughs> Charizard's dope. Happy good, birthday. Good birthday gift. Happy birthday. Huge. I don't even... He's S13, like the size of a pet. S13's a small back window, so I don't know if yeah, I'll be able to see past him. <laughs> Dude, his belly's so soft. <laughs> so soft. It literally is. Charizard. It, it literally is like a kitten for you. <laughs> so to bring it back around, today we are talking about a topic that's very near and dear for us as Japanese. Ooh. Hey. White Raptor hey. without the graphics package. You don't hey. see that often. You must that is off. clean. I, I like, like it. That. I like it. <laughs> We're both like, I like that. It had. A, it kind of has this like stormtrooper imperialist. Look. It does. I like it a lot actually. But to get back on track here, we're talking about JDM cars. You just turned 25. I did. So let's let's do our homework. Some of the best cars were made in 1992. Fact. As well one as the of Batman them, animated series. One, one of them the in best Batman animated That's true. Okay. One of the best ones in particular is the car that you own, which happens to be a 92. Yes. 240 SX. Yes. So with that said, we wanted to talk about where we think Japanese cars are headed. Looking back and looking forward. So, to start from the beginning, what do you think, I mean, old school Japanese cars are not going away, but they are kind of disappearing, thanks to people being dumb and crashing them. So, what do you think is going to happen 15, 20 years from now? To the classics or in the industry? Both. Because when you look at the industry now, what do we have available? We have like 350Zs, yeah. I 370Zs, think, honestly, I think modernized Just cars. like back up from like not only JDM, but cars in general. I think now that we're coming out of the recession and stuff like that, yeah, and America, yeah. you here in the States, um, auto, Ooh. sorry, bright yellow yeah. Viper. I think, uh, Automobile manufacturers are finally starting to get the hint that there's an enthusiast market out there. Mm -hmm. um, and so they're reproducing, which is cool for us. I mean, 
you, you can, a prime example of it is Dodge. I mean, yeah. they're coming out with, you know, the Amazing. Hellcat, the Demon. Skypack. You know, Mustang had, well, Mustang's always had a kajillion different variations. Chevy with the Corvette and the, and the Camaro. Camaro. You know, so as far as now is a great time to be an auto enthusiast. Yeah. Uh, even even the Euro scene, I mean, like, BMW's always been putting out the M Series, and I love BMWs. Yeah. They're just too expensive for me. <laughs> uh, I think they're expensive for everyone. <laughs> and, uh, you know, but even, like, even just on the right, I mean, like, Ford has the Raptor, you know what I mean? Specialty trucks, like the, the Shelby truck, yeah. and all that stuff. Um, Dodge Ram has the Rebel truck. Which is their equivalent of a, like a Baja truck and a the power truck. wagon that yeah. just came out. Yeah. So, so you know, and then on the more like premium scene, like NSX, NSX yeah. and just remember that um, Lexus has like their F type, the F Sport, yeah. um, in like different models, and then you know, so everybody's finally starting to come out with more like auto sport. Yeah. Type things again because people can. I don't think people can afford it, but like there's definitely a market for it. You know, yeah. people are willing to make the sacrifice to own vehicles. You know, and what you see now is in the past premium vehicles were only for like the really rich. Yeah. Um, but but that's you know, kind of how the JDM world came together. Yeah, I think. But what's kind of special now is like if somebody who has good, you know, management and good credit they can buy the dream car you know what i mean yeah. and uh, of course it's always better to own outright but let's be realistic that can be hard yeah. um but if you know if your responsibilities are in order then go for it you know what i mean if that's something that you know makes you happy you know yeah and, and then kind of levels the playing field you know like i know somebody there's like a preacher that actually would say uh you know about a car like you see somebody with a nice car yeah and either they're really rich or an they're extreme amount of really debt broke yeah. yeah as far as the classics goes um you know they're harder they're, i don't know if they're getting harder to find it's getting harder to find nice ones yeah you know clean ones so i mean back in the day you could get a pristine just as an example an evo 6 or an evo 7 now you find someone with an evo 6 and They've either had it from day one, or they got really, really lucky, or it's been crashed six times. Yeah. You know, so it's, I feel like when it comes to some of these cars that we adore, our old school Japanese tuner cars, it is becoming more of a challenge. Yeah, you know, you know but people are still cool to this now day, is, And we've had this conversation is that it is getting harder to find them, but because they're so much like older, they're starting to be imported now. Yeah, which, which is nice. In Japan, and it's very readily available you know, over there. Yeah. So, which leads me to another point: when it comes to manufacturers now, for people like us who like some of the cheaper Japanese drift-type cars and everything, we look at cars now. We look at the market that's available because 20 years ago you had a number of options: 240s, a both the 240Z which is still available in most places, yeah. as well as the 240SX here in the States, 180SX in the Soviet yeah, over in Japan and other markets. You also had GTSTs, GTRs, and then a bunch of other cars available as well. Yeah. Now, what do we have? We've got 370s, 350s, kind of not really, yeah. at dealerships anyway. GTR, sure, but that's kind of like everywhere. 370. Yeah. Uh, the GT86 slash BRZ. Yeah. The BRZ is really becoming a... Which is cool for those guys. Yeah. It's really time. becoming a platform, you know? Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, when you have guys out there that are taking the Ferrari engines and dropping them in there, like, there's definitely a community for them now. Uh, it's just... I thought about one. I mean, they're cool. Yeah. But the question now is, what else do we have available? We have the Imprezas and the SDIs, yeah. but there's no more Evos. There are pretty much no more rear-wheel yeah. drive Hondas anymore. Uh, where did our community yeah, go? The fact of the matter is is that the, the, the age of the basic... Cheap car made great. Yeah, basic platform made, you know, 
customizable is kind of like it's just fading scary. out. But you know what part of it too is, and I don't want to blame just the car. Well, I'm inadvertently going to blame the car companies, but uh, but it's not really their fault. Technology, yeah, um, because now you're dealing with so much electronics. Even the most basics of cars are all spider web full of electronics that are not easily modified. And technology. You know what I'm saying? That's spaceships. And, and the thing is is like even mid level like mid to entry level cars are coming packed full of features, which is great for us, the consumer, because yeah. the price, you know, but like when you have a like you have some kind of suspension compensation system going on or some kind of like tire management type system in a basic car well, once you start putting aftermarket wheels, once you put coils on, you're jacking with the core system that has, you know, that's integrated throughout that basic car. It was more, it was simpler back in the day yeah. to change things out because it didn't mess with the operation of the car. Yeah. And now, you know, not only avoiding warranties and stuff, but which some, you know, people have been doing that for years, yeah. you know, but which is not a big deal. But the integral parts of the system, you can't just change them around now. Yeah. Because it's so jam-packed full of safety technology, handling comfort technology, that it's just not... If you want something like sporty, you need to buy something sporty. Yeah. You know, kind Which of. Which is kind of sad because there's some really good platforms out there that just, you can't... Like, if you could modify them, they would be great. Yeah. Like, the newest, the newest IS300. Mm -hmm. If you could take that Joker and modify that like you could the old IS300, dude, that thing would be sick. Yeah. I mean, there's videos out there where people have taken two J's and one J's and shoved those inside of an IS300 and made a rear wheel drive, or sometimes kept the front wheel drive system. Yep. And they're monsters. They're great handling cars because of the way the body and everything's designed. Yeah. You know, it's just, they've kind of made it so that we, the people, can't do what we the people have been doing best for the past 20 years. You know what I'm saying? But, All that said. But it also leaves a, a, a road open for innovation too. That is true. You know, I mean, new products are coming it. out and stuff yeah. to like work around and stuff like that. And you know what? There's always going to be somebody that's willing to do something. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's even like, even if it's something simple, like just changing like, just getting a wrap on the car or something like that, you know, it's, it's yours, you know? So, yeah. and to be honest, like, like, I'm, I feel really fortunate and really blessed to be able to have a daily car and like a fun car. Yeah. Um, because to be honest, I like the comforts. You know what I'm saying? I like being able yeah. to have air conditioning. I like power locks, power windows, you know, stuff like that. That was okay. Sorry. It's okay. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> that was, it, it was okay when I was like younger, you know? And yeah. like, I, it was cool to rough it and everything. Which I'm not old, but at the same time, at the same time, like I, I do carry around people that don't live that life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that aren't necessarily about the race. Yeah, car exactly. Yeah. You know, and it's just like I remember I had my S13 back home, the and um, <laughs> it was right after I did all my suspension work to it, and I gave, I picked up my grandma from her house. <laughs> that took me grandma and it was a like a, car. it was like a really, <laughs> I had to like lower her down into it and help her get out and help her put the. <laughs> our people who know S13s have they have the electronic seatbelt like the, yeah. the track and like well, she's like her freaking out because it was like closing in on her you know and like <laughs> it was funny you know oh but it's like, funny because i can pick like, like metro grandma <laughs> you know and from that point on like we always drove her like i always whenever i was with them i drive and they just ride there you go um you know they drive you know on their own obviously but if i don't have to do that to somebody i won't yeah you know? unless it's somebody that like needs to learn the race car life, you know what yes. I'm saying? Um, AKA but AKA all of the youth at our church. So. Now all of what we've said brings up a question in my mind. What would happen to the car market if manufacturers like Nissan and Toyota would have started listening to us saying, we want an S16 or we want a real Toyota Supra, not this thing that's got a BMW engine inside of it. We want our yeah. 1J or just a new version of that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or a 2J turn into a 3J, yeah. whatever that's supposed to look like. Like, what would happen to the market if that happened? Could you imagine an S16? Yeah, you know, I don't know. I mean, it seems like definitely because of the internet, um, yeah. the consumer's voice is really being heard. 
Finally. So like, there's been there, there was like a time in like life in existence where companies didn't really care what people wanted. They just kind of made stuff. Um, and now with the internet, with instant feedback, like as soon as something goes out, you yeah, as soon as a product hits the shelves, as soon as the announcement of a product goes, people are already analyzing it. You, I, I go, you're on YouTube right now watching this. Yeah. There's a video about somebody. About there's a there's a channel about everything. Yeah. And I know because I follow a lot of obscure channels. Yes, he like does. I follow a guy that just reviews backpacks. Like you know what I mean? Just <laughs> I like backpacks. There's somebody out there reviewing products, and companies know that so much so that they're creating whole divisions that are focused on like internet, social media, and stuff like that to market their products and stuff yeah. like that. Which you have to be careful because you know somebody may taking pay under the table to talk really good about the product. So I was like, watch more than one. But yeah. Um, so now is a, is like you know our voices are really being heard as consumers, which is great. Um, and uh, you know you're gonna get that instant feedback and you can see companies adapting to that. Like, yeah. uh, again, I'll take, I, I mentioned Nintendo. Yeah. Um, like, I, I really wanna get a Switch. I've been wanting to get a Switch for a long time. He asked this guy. Mm -hmm. And um, they're right now they're <laughs> hard to get. Um, and um, so I've just been watching a lot of like reviews and stuff and E3 just happened. Yep. So like all the, like, the announcements are coming out, people are talking about the games and stuff. Um, but the point is, is people say that Nintendo won E3 because they did, because they came out with all these awesome games and they released all these different stuff, all these promises, and it's what people have been wanting. Yeah. And people are saying that Nintendo is finally listening to what people want. And you can see their stocks going up. Tremendous. They can't keep up with supply and demand on the Switch and stuff like that. And, and you they're don't, not mass producing the Switch like they used to with the old consoles. That's you know, why they would break. These ones are actually being handled correctly. Yeah, so you know, I think it's, to kind of answer your question, yeah. is like I think it'd be good for a company to listen to what consumers want, yeah. um, and they and Nintendo's a perfect example of that. You know that they listen to what people want um, to a certain degree. Obviously, like they're still making creative decisions, which yeah. makes it fun. You know what I mean? Like if they just gave us exactly what we want, then there'd be no mystery. You know, there'd be yeah. no next cool thing. That's true. But um, at the same, you know, time, as far as like the you know, it's a good mix. You know what I'm saying? So I think. But let's just, hypothetically speaking, let's pretend, because we already know that Nissan, someone actually asked Nissan, I can't verify this information, so I apologize. I, just, I remember this conversation with somebody. Someone actually asked Nissan, hey, why don't you guys make another Z car or another S class or S chassis rather? And their answer was, we have noticed that our sales have been pointing to the Nissan Juke as the car that younger people are buying. To which I said, that's bogus, okay. <laughs> I think those kids are buying for their grandparents, maybe. But, you know, it, this is one of the issues that we've had is companies don't listen to us. So, with that said, what if Nissan did start listening to us and an S16 came out? What would the aftermarket world look like? Do you think they would jump on it like that because, oh, sweet, we have a new S chassis? Or do you think it would take some time because the S13 or the S14 and the S15 have been tried and true for so long yeah. that people might be skeptical that, well, maybe Nissan just completely screwed it up. Yeah, I think at this point in the game, um, you're definitely going to face uh, a uh, a charger situation here. A charger situation? Yeah, the charger situation is when they first released... The re -released. new re-release, the Charger new body style, like Gen One in like 2000 something, That's and some deep. people loved it and some people hated it. And it's been a while, so yeah. first you'd have to get over that. What does the car look like? Yeah. People are gonna love it. They're gonna hate it. Are they gonna stick true to the design? Are they gonna bust an Impala? Oh God! You know, and <laughs> all anything Impala about it is the stick, the badging on it, and, yeah. the, and it's awful. It's an awful vehicle. Yeah. Um, so what route is Nissan going to take? And then after you get over that, you know, what motor is going to be in it? Because now, it, you know. That is true. You know, we what, don't have the motor. It, it, like it's hard because it's hypothetical. You know, it's really hypothetical. But, you know, I think that the market would adapt to it. I mean, they adapted to the BRZ quickly. Very quickly. I mean, the Subi market is still really full of innovation, you know. Oh, yeah. So, I, you know, I think that the, 
the aftermarket, you know, community would adapt to it. I mean, they're gonna have to. That's where money's at. People are buying yeah. like somebody feels fit to make the car. That means there's money out there. Someone will. Someone can make money off of it. Yeah. You know, so someone's gonna make something for it. And you know, I don't know. Last but not least, we got one last question for us. What would be two vehicles you'd want to see brought back? So whether it's a discontinued car or it's a car that is currently being made, but they haven't made a new version of it in several years. Okay. Um, first would be uh, Ford Bronco. Ford Bronco, but they are making one. There's rumors, but it hasn't been confirmed. It hasn't been confirmed yet? Not to my knowledge. We'll have to look this Let up. me know in the comments. Let us know. I think for me, I would definitely, okay, I'm biased because I have an Evo, but I personally would like to see another 3000 GT. Okay. All wheel drive with some version of a 4G63 engine, not the 4B11. Yeah. I know I'm going to get hate for that, but I'm sorry. I don't like the 4B11. Um, yeah, I would love to see a new one. Those are great cars. They have a very classic following. People that like those cars really stick true to the GTO or 3000 GT, FTO, whatever, that line, whatever you want to call it. They follow it religiously. So there's a really good support for it. So I would love to see a new version of that. Okay. Dodson 510. Yes. Go yeah. ahead. Tell us why. <laughs> It just looks amazing. I don't know how, see it's kind of like mixed because I don't know what it would look like as a modern vehicle. So there was a concept made yeah. several years ago. Yeah. Nissan came out with a 510. I guess technically what the 510 was was like an everyday commuter car kind of. So like technically we have that already. But, but the 510 was fast. It was the first, yeah. in Japan, it was sold as a, a Skyline. Yeah. It was the first Skyline. Yeah, so, I don't know. I don't know how that would look, but I guess even just something with the badging. That, you know, that looks sim similar, <laughs> kind of, yeah. with the same, like, gusto. Same like concept, I guess yeah. I would love to see that. I think for me, the other car I love, aside from another Evo, Evo 11, which we know will never happen. But I would love to see, and you'll laugh at this, I would love to see a new generation of the Z. I don't know if there being one coming up the line because honestly, the Juke is a oversized 370 Z. Yeah. So I, it's hard to say what uh, they'll come up with, but I would love to see another version of the 370 or 350 Z. And I would like to see two renditions. I would love to see a track spec version, kind of like a, Nismo, like a Nismo, and I would like to see a premium version, I guess three, so a Nismo, yeah. a premium version, and then like a dirt cheap basic version. Yeah. Just so that we'd have a modern S13 type car, because that was the whole bread and butter of an S13. It's a cheap yeah. car, it's super reliable, great platform for speed and handling. Yeah. But it came at a low budget price. Yeah. Like, that's what I want to see here. But we're on our way to Maryland now. We're going to go eat, eat some good grubbins, get fat and full, and get excited <laughs> because it's seafood and we don't get good quality seafood often down here, unfortunately. That's just kind of the name of the game in this area. So we're going to sign off for now. Thanks for watching, guys, and we will see you on another episode of Car Room. God bless you. Konnichiwa. That's a low. Oh. Peace. Sayonara. <laughs>